Can I end or I'll leave? All right, we are live. There it is, perfect. Okay, we'll wait just 30 seconds on the Facebook Live and then we can start. Uh, you can do mostly English and then occasionally if you want to do Arabic, it's up to you. Uh, I think most of the audience will be English speakers. Uh, those of you who are in the Zoom room, if you want to share the event, uh, please go ahead and do so. It's live right now on Facebook. الآن بتشوفه بالجروب الآن. يا يا قد شفته وعملت له شير. Thank you. Okay, we should maybe just wait a couple more minutes and then start. Yeah, just one more minute because we were starting late. Okay. Assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Hisham Hussein and I am the president of the Yemeni American Student Association, uh, AOISP. And we are here today for a fireside chat with Mundar Gaber. Uh, I will give you an introduction about Mundar Gaber shortly, uh, but I would like to welcome everybody on the Zoom room as well as watching us on Facebook Live. Uh, sorry for starting a little bit late. We had a technical issue. Uh, but it should be going smoothly from now on. At the end of the session, we'll welcome questions and questions at the end, and we'll have a chance to get them addressed by Mundar Gaber himself. Uh, if you have questions during the presentation or during the conversation, please feel free to write them on the chat in the Zoom room or on the chat on Facebook. Okay, so just a little bit of an introduction about AYSP and what we do. Uh, the American Association of Yemeni Students and Professionals uh, was established more than 10 years ago, and it's a national organization that promotes innovation in advancing the educational success of Yemeni Americans by networking, mentoring, advocacy, academic support, community-based initiatives, and the elimination of barriers to education. We are a 501c3 organization, and you can find us in many of our avenues through the website, aysb.org, our Facebook page that we're broad broadcasting onto right now, as well as Instagram. Uh, we are very active on both networks. Uh, if you feel like watching one of our video productions, we have uh, created a YouTube channel uh, several months ago, and it has most of our content that we produce. Uh, if you wanna have, uh, if you wanna have a conversation or send us an email, you can send it at info at aysb.org. Now to today's topic, construction and engineering careers. Uh, today we have Mundar Jaber, who is a civil engineer from our community. He lives in the San Francisco Bay Area and he was actually highlighted early this month as our professional of the month. Uh, and you can see his profile, his story, 
and some of the tips and advice that he gives to Yemeni professionals or Yemeni students about his career path. Uh, Mundur Jaber uh, has a master's degree in civil engineering from San Jose State University uh, and currently works as an assistant project manager. Uh, he's experienced in, as a project engineer and demonstrate, has a demonstrated history of working in the construction industry for the past several years. Uh, he is skilled in construction management, field engineering, cost engineering, traffic and transportation engineering. Uh, without further ado, uh, Mundar Jaber, please go ahead and take us away. And uh, you can start with your presentation and talk about the career as a whole, and then we'll open up for Q&A. Okay. Well, hello everyone. First of all, thank you uh, for attending to the today's session. And inshallah, hopefully you get something out of it, uh, learn a little bit more about civil engineering, construction management, and, and uh, you know, the career path from start uh, to finish, you know, going from school all the way to having a job and, uh, um, you know, getting promoted in that field. Um, so I'm going to share the presentation that we kind of put together, highlighting what the civil engineering major is and uh, what it entails. Uh, Let me know when you see my screen, please. Okay, share. Right. Yep, we can see it. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions in the meantime, please uh, don't uh, don't hesitate to ask during you know my presentation. This is not just a one way type of presentation. I don't want it to be that way. I want it to be interactive a little bit. So if you have any questions about the disciplines, the different disciplines in civil engineering and, uh, you know, anything we go over in these uh, slides, please uh, stop us and uh, let us know. So yes, there is a lot of disciplines in engineering. Um, and we're going to look at, uh, obviously, civil engineering, but you can see all these other ones going all the way from aerospace to electrical to industrial to manufacturing nuclear to petroleum and then software obviously in computer engineering and then uh, what we're going to be talking about today is civil engineering that's what i graduated um in, and that's uh, i do construction engineering today so that's a little bit a segue from civil engineering so <clears throat> civil engineering you know this is the definition from the website one of the largest branches of engineering deals with buildings bridges dams, roads, and other public work structures. Uh, civil engineers plan, design, and supervise the construction of facilities such as high-rise buildings, airport, water treatment centers, and sanitation plants. To add to this definition, you know, civil engineering is probably, uh, you know, and I used to go to school that our professors would say, this is like the mother of engineering. Why? Because humans, you know, from day one, the first thing they engineered was shelters, you know, homes, caves, stuff like that. So, you know, civil engineering in itself is a little bit different from mechanical engineering, electrical. These things came in a little bit later to make a building or a cave alive. And that's a joke we have in construction normally because you could just do a building, but without the mechanical, electrical, and all these other uh, factors that go into the building, it would be just a cave. But, you know, it was the mother of engineering because of, you know, we were always looking for shelters to begin with, even before the fire invention. So just a fun fact. There. But then you look at the civil engineering as a whole, it's, uh, it's the umbrella for so many other disciplines under civil engineering. So when someone says you're a civil engineer, don't assume that he's only doing uh, highways and roads and bridges because a lot of people associate civil engineering only with that. But when, when you look at civil engineering and, and if you take the civil engineering uh, career path in school, you will take all these classes going from transportation, structural to construction, to environmental, to water resources, to so many classes. And when, during that program, you're gonna be able to identify what disciplines you really wanna focus on. And then the last year or so, or even the last two years, you, you're gonna start taking more classes and that will um, in transportation engineering, as an example, or in structural engineering, as an example, or construction engineering, you can normally, you know, take mix and match, and but you have to decide. Most universities will tell you to decide which field or discipline you want to be in under civil engineering. Do you want to be in transportation engineering, or structural engineering, or construction engineering? And that is through taking some elective classes. 
Okay, so you're going to have to choose which elective classes you want to take. They call them elective classes. So that's going to be an, in addition to the core courses that you have to take for the civil engineering major, you're going to have to take elective classes to basically be more specialized. Obviously, you know, you're just going to be fresh out of school, but in school, you're going to be more specialized in one of these branches. So now I'm going to talk about these branches. And uh, I don't want to be talking too fast. If, again, if anyone has any questions, any comments, please, uh, you know, talk right now and, you know, interact with us. So it's not uh, just, uh, you know, bold uh, uh, presentation. So that's the civil engineering definition as a, as a whole. And again, it's an umbrella for a lot of other majors under, uh, under that uh, name, the civil engineering title. Uh, so now we go down to the branches of civil engineering. So we have transportation engineering. So transportation engineering, and I don't think I'm going to be reading each definition of these, uh, but I'm going to be explaining what they are. And you all are going to have this presentation available. I think after this presentation, we can distribute this. Uh, but transportation engineering, for instance, you're going to be working on bridges, on highways, on roads, on, um, you know, even retaining walls that you see on the highway. Uh, I was a, a student uh, assistant at the California Department of Transportation for a year uh, during my master's degree at San Jose State. So I was doing that for the first year or so. And uh, I was in the bridge design, um, uh, we'll call it uh, branch. And uh, we were looking, you know, just on uh, highways, uh, rehabilitation. You see the highways all the time, you know, just the top. Uh, AC uh, or you know asphalt layers or something like that they start tearing it out uh, just the normal wear and tear and, and and you know we do rehabilitation or California Department of Transportation would do these uh, normally this, this is something they just do as maintenance but, but obviously there's the big projects of like doing the new Bay Bridge that we have here between San Francisco and Oakland that Bay Bridge by itself took about maybe 20 years in design and planning a lot of people don't don't even know that or don't believe even what I say. But the idea of the new Bay Bridge started after the earthquake in 1989. And uh, because it split with the Treasure Island in between, the people familiar with the Bay Area, uh, um, you know, it split in, bet uh, in between Oakland and San Francisco with uh, an island called Treasure Island. So they replaced the whole bridge on the, on the Oakland side. And on the other side, they just retrofitted that side because San Francisco does not have a lot of space to widen or, you know, just uh, uh, basically construct a new bridge. So anyways, transportation engineering, you will be dealing with these bridges, highways, uh, roads, you know, anything you basically drive on on a daily basis, that's that's pretty much what transportation engineering is about. You can see here also another ex other examples like tunnels, railways, airports, airways, waterways, canals, canals also fall under other areas, waterways fall under another branch, which we're going to get to. It's water resources engineering. So we're going to get to these. But that is the highlight of transportation engineering. If you want to be specialized in that, there's always uh, certificates, additional certificates after you graduate from school to specialize in each one of these. Uh, as a matter of fact, Hisham Hussein is a PE. He's a professional engineer. And that is an exam you take from the state of California Board of Engineers. And you go to, uh, it's two phases. You take the first part of it, which is an EIT, they call it. It became an engineering training. It's an eight hour uh, test. But then you have to have experience for two or three years and study a whole lot to take a professional engineer exam. And that's what gives you a stamp to be step in calculation, to be making uh, designs. And you can have your name on that. So the PE, professional engineer, you can also have under that, you can be a transportation engineer or a structural engineer or construction engineer and not construction engineering, but structural engineering, and it becomes an SE. And then you become specialized as a certified structural engineer from the state of California, from the board of engineers. So these branches, you can go as deep as, as I said, this is like the furthest you can get is getting a license as a structural engineer or as a transportation engineer from the board. And there's a lot of phases into that. If you have any questions in regards to that, we can talk a, a little bit about that. But right now, maybe keeping it simple and generic is, is uh, more beneficial. So like I said, so you have the structural engineering 
is the second branch. We talked about transportation. So moving on to the structural engineering. Structural engineering is a lot of analysis, a lot of math for you. If you like, if you're that type of person, you want to be doing a lot of math, learning a lot of analysis, working with software. So the analysis I'm talking about is uh, in, in our field, what would that be? It would be studying the forces or designing a column to withstand certain forces, right? So you look at your house and you're gonna see columns on each corner. And these columns are, are what are they doing? They're withstanding the loads of the concrete deck, which is the thing you step on. So you, you calculate these sources and you analyze the, the um, forces and, in, and you analyze the, the design and, and calculate it. And obviously that's way before uh, you know, it gets to the blueprints and whatnot. So you do those calculations. So it is probably uh, one of the toughest branches <laughs> just because it's a lot of math. I, did, I enjoyed it, but it was a tough, uh, all these classes were not easy. Uh, the structural engineering classes were not easy. Um, but if you enjoy math, you should take that. Now going on to the next one, construction engineering, I would say I enjoy this more and that's why I'm in the general contracting business today or in the construction industry. Uh, construction engineering, um, and slash management, there is a little bit difference just in terms of taking more classes or less classes. Construction engineering, you would take probably a little bit more math or whatever, you know, more, uh, you know, science classes. And then construction management, you will take less. And it depends on the university you're going to, they will either offer construction engineering as a major or construction management, or as a matter of fact, here in the Bay Area, where all the new universities I know of and uh, you know, researched, they don't have construction engineering or construction management. And therefore my master's was, even though I wanted to do construction, but I ended up doing, again, civil engineering master's. But then in civil engineering master's, I specialized in construction management as 50% and I did transportation engineering. So, but you can go to other universities like Oregon and Oregon or even uh, uh which ones uh chico state they offer it's very popular for construction management a lot of a lot of you know construction management uh, students graduate from uh, chico state so that's a different field so now the difference is uh, between the two like i said is just more a matter of like more science or less science so what is construction engineering or management is basically managing the field work so when we are already building, you're gonna have construction engineering or construction management team. That could be represented in the, in the fashion of the, general, the GC, the general contractor. So I work with the GC, I go every day, I look at the plans, I look at the calculations of the structural engineer, not so much that I have to understand every bit of it. I mean, at the end of the day, he's gonna give me a design of a foundation or a footing that we're gonna pour. And that's what we do as the, as the as the GC is monitoring or, or, or supervising that process and making sure that footing and pier is going to be built per the specifications from the structural engineer and, you know, per the drawings. Obviously, we have like drawings and, and, and specifications. So for us, we just look at that. Obviously, we got to have some kind of knowledge or understanding of what we're looking at, but we don't have to go deep into the calculations or any of that because that's the structural engineer job or, or uh, we call them the EOR, which is the engineer of records for a specific project. So we can go to them and ask them more specific questions, but on the day-to-day -day basis, we just gotta understand what we're looking at and how we can build it. And that's construction engineering slash management. And we do the logistics, uh, you know, how the trucks are gonna be coming in and out. You know, there's a lot about and then construction management safety wise, you know, where are they going to park, where, where, where are they going to do this? And then schedule also like when, we, you know, everything's got to be in sequence. Obviously, you're not going to build everything at once. So everything got to go in sequence, excavation first, and then you do the shoring and then you do the, the foundation and then you build up. So all this, this goes under construction management and engineering. Uh, before I go to the next slide, I just want to open up for any questions on this one because obviously this is a lot of information and I just don't want to be rambling uh, by myself. With Abu Wahid, she's talking about Arabic. The Salaam al Arabic, the Jama'ah, I'm talking about Arabic. Abu Wahid, I'm 
وإذا make sure you're unmuted لأن كل الغالبية هنا muted so إذا تشي تسأل سؤال ولا شيء يعني عمل unmute unmute yourself if you have any questions Yeah, I'll keep watching it, Mundar. So just uh, continue. Okay. I, know I can pause you if there is a question. On yeah, the it's, a, it's a lot of information. I just don't want people to get lost and, and not know what we're uh, or lose information. So we're talking about three branches right now. So we cover transportation engineering, structural engineering, and construction engineering slash management. Uh, these are the brand the, the first three branches of, uh, of civil engineering and their civil engineering. Here is just, uh, you know, kind of graphics to show you what we were talking about. So transportation on the left, you see bridges and stuff like that. So if you're a transportation engineer, this is what you're going to be dealing with on a daily basis. And then on the right, you can see those are the construction people. We work with people. We need people. Construction is like you need, you know, a team, a huge team normally. It takes, it takes a village, you know, they say all the time. They use that term takes a village to build like a little hospital or, or a little building or something. You're gonna have 200, 300 people at, at a time working on one site. So there's a lot of coordination, there's a lot of logistics. You can see people looking at plants, that's what we do on a daily basis. And then on the left, like I said, is transportation engineering. The next one is structural engineering. You can see here the analysis on the, on the left, like I said, you use software or something like that. And then in reality, that's what you're gonna be having as a product, looking at these columns and concrete decks and all this stuff. Obviously, this is not limited to columns or concrete decks, but this is just an example to show you what you're going to be doing. And so you study all the analysis and forces going in the structure, and, and you're going to be the one designing that. Obviously, if you don't have the license, the PE that we talked about, you're not going to be the one putting your name on it because you can't, you don't have a name on a stamp, uh, but you're going to be assisting those professional engineers who have a license from the state. Uh, but obviously, after two years, three years, you can... Uh, Apply for that and do that yourself and become a professional engineer certified by the state. Um, so going next to the other branches, there's the geotech engineering, and then there's the material engineering on this slide. So looking at that, this is already the fourth branch of civil engineering. And again, I know like a lot of people think civil engineering is just one thing; it's a lot of things under it. It's a huge, uh, it's a huge field. So as uh, the fourth one is geotechnical engineering, and this is deals with the soils. These are the guys who come in. So now the structural engineer says, I want to build this, uh, you know, 14 stories uh, on, this, uh, on this parcel. How is that gonna happen? They have to consult a geotechnical engineering. Why? Because the geotechnical engineering have, uh, engineer has to go there and, and do study on the soil. So they go do borings and stuff like that. And they take samples of the soils. So there's different types of soils. So which soil is gonna withstand what forces and loads on top of it? So there's type C, type B or whatever. So they do that and they do an analysis and they say, okay, this soil is very, you know, uh, kind of um, clay, like a lot of clay. And those are a little bit harder to work with, which we have a lot in the Bay Area because they're not solid enough for you just to build a start uh, putting piers in them and foundation and stuff like that. When they're, when they're a little bit, you know, watery, uh, then it's, it becomes a, more of a, like a passive load uh, uh, problem on those foundations. Um, so they do all this analysis for you and they tell you what type of soil you have. So basically, if you're going to major in geotech, and I have friends who did that, I love the geotech engineering classes. They were fun. But, uh, you know, it's everyone has different. I find myself more in construction engineering and management. They're all fun. But this one, like I said, is more just, you know, you're out there always taking samples of soil. Uh, looking at uh, the, the, the profiles, landscape of the areas and stuff like that and doing the study for the developments to come. So that's geotech, not, not, you know, not, not complicated in the sense, obviously everything has a lot of calculations that goes with it, but the concept is not that complicated. Material engineering, these guys, they just, uh, they, this is a whole different, this is a little bit outside, sometimes could be outside of construction. Obviously we use material like sealants, caulking, that goes between joints in the building and stuff like that, the paint and all that stuff, that's obviously at some point was materially engineered. It just, you know, paint was not just, didn't come like, you know, people put some colors or whatever, but, uh, or the caulking that you see that prevents water from uh, leaking into the building and stuff like that. So those are the guys who engineer those materials and, and uh, it's almost like 
very far from the day-to-day -day construction that we see today. Is that they do the products and we just buy the products from, we end up buying the products from manufacturers or something like that. So you will barely interact with material engineering as a construction or a civil engineer working on site. But obviously it's a major under civil engineering and you can be out there doing new products and stuff. So again, geotech, this is, this is just uh, to give you a picture of what we're talking about when we say geotech. So this whole thing, these pictures, you can see it was engineered, not that someone just went there and started excavating. Because you know the, our professor, my geotech professor always said, if you don't learn anything from my class, learn one thing, which is dirt is heavy. If this dirt collapsed on this uh, truck that's in the middle, those guys are dead. So you have to engineer shoring and how you're gonna excavate all the way down there. So the, the, the soil around it does not collapse on the people working down it. So it's gotta be safe. And, and who's the go doing those analysis, understanding the type of soil is the geotech people. And then from there, you can see a guy here using the patterns. Uh, that's a machine just to study soil movement and, and um, and under it is the piers that I'm talking about. That's the foundation for a building. The next one is the material engineering. You can see these guys just uh, engineering materials for products and whatnot. It's almost like chemical engineering, but uh, uh, not so much. And then the next ones are uh, the other branches are water resources engineering and environmental engineering. They kind of go hand to hand almost, but water resources engineering is more robust in the, in the sense of like, they're actually doing the engineering for dams, uh, for canals, uh, stuff like that. So, and they study the water resources like reservoirs and stuff like that. If we have reservoirs here in San Francisco, we have uh, Lake Merced, as, as a matter of fact, is a reservoir. A lot of people think it's just a lake that existed at some point in life, but it is a reservoir. So they, and, and I, they, it's like an emergency water resource in case doomsday happen and we don't have water anywhere or something and we need water or we can use that water for energy and, and you know by energy i mean like building dams you know dams are normally energy generating um, um, structures they're, they're not just there to uh, keep water in one place no they use that water to also generate uh, energy so environmental engineering going to the next one is the same thing but they are more like chemical engineers so they would be studying the, the, the properties of the water in that lake, in Lake uh, Merced. Uh, not only water is not limited to water, they're also, uh, you know, they, they study the environment around that. So for example, uh, the company I work for, they do a lot of solar projects. And when we go do a solar project, you're going in the middle of nowhere, you know, taking acres and acres uh, to do, uh, you know, thousands of solar panels. So when we do that, we bring environmental engineers to study that whole site. And sometimes they would shut us down for, because there's an eagle nesting on one side of the project. So we can't interrupt the ecosystem of that whole site or interrupt that eagle from living their life or you know, as, as funny as it sounds, but that is, you know, you have to take all of these factors into consideration. So environmental engineers, they will come up with plans how to protect this area while we're doing construction and building around it. So it's not limited only to water, it's limited to the, the environment that's around the construction uh, or the sites that we built. And also it, it goes beyond the just the construction of building. They look at pollution in the air, they look at uh, they do studies and that's why we have the, the you know we have bag here in the bay area that's an abbreviation for the bay area air quality district i believe or something like that so those are the guys right now when we have all these fires they tell you what the index of uh, the pollution index in the, in the air is and whether it is obviously that index give you a limit of like hazardous this area is hazardous and this area is not hazardous and this is healthy and how unhealthy so it's a measure of how bad the quality of the air at a certain time during the day. So these are the guys that do that kind of stuff. So that's water resources and environmental engineering. It's fun. I liked, uh, we didn't do a lot of water resources engineering classes. I'm gonna be honest, like in San Francisco or San Jose State. And again, it all depends on the university you're in. They're gonna provide more of these classes or less either structural or water resources or environmental, they might be strong in one area, but not so strong in the other one. So it all depends on the university you go to. Uh, next, uh, 
uh, well, these are the examples. So you can see this is water resources engineering, dams, big dams, gen, uh, canals, and stuff like that. And then the environmental engineering, you can see here taking a sample of water, studying the pollution of the area, looking at you know looking at these huge projects on the side, uh, on the on the right side. Obviously, the we just our construction people did not go there and decide, hey, this is the place we want to build in, and we're just taking it over. No, there was environmental studies that happened before that. That okay, if we're going to build this project in this specific area, is it going to impact this area negatively or positively? the next uh, 10, 20 years, or even now, or stuff like that. So there's always environmental studies associated with these types of projects, and even here in the city. So going next, I think we're done. So these are like seven branches we covered under civil engineering. And uh, uh, I want to, let's see. Yeah, I'm not uh, gonna cover it in Arabic, the whole thing, but يعني في عدة مجالات تحت السيفل إنجنيرينج اللي هي ال transportation structural construction and geotech material و water resources و environment يعني هنا بس listed حوالي seven majors تحت السيفل إنجنيرينج و يعني أنا إحنا بنقول branches but they're actually they're almost like different majors and once you even evolve from the school, you know, circle, and you become like outside of a professional working outside on a daily basis, it's even gonna get narrower and narrower under each one of these fields. And you're gonna find yourself doing so much more than what this slide is saying that, you know, the definition of this water resources engineering or, or environmental engineering. So anyways, with that, I think, uh, see that I was going too fast or we have enough time to take as many questions as you guys have for the next 20 minutes, Hisham, or what do we have? No, this is great. Thank you very much, Mundar. This is actually fascinating, as somebody mentioned in the chat room here. Uh, essentially, we were planning just a, a chat, uh, initially me and Mundar, and then it kind of uh, went further, where we kind of put together information so we can share it with folks uh, on the stream. Uh, this, this recording will be available on the Facebook page for as many months and, and, and years to move forward and we'll make sure that we create it in YouTube as well and, and that we share it with uh, most people, maybe high school students as well, uh, just to make sure that a lot of people will get to see this valuable information. Uh, until we start getting some questions for the, from, the, from the Zoom room, I'm gonna, I have a quick question for you, Mundir, and then yes. I'm gonna call upon each person on the Zoom. If you have a question, please unmute yourself, say your question or your comment. You are more, more than welcome to do that. If you want to raise your hand, it's up to you. If you want to just type it in the chat, I will make sure I read your question. But one quick quick question for you, Mundir, is that yeah. right now there is a lot of attention around uh, technical fields, uh, the IT world, software engineering, electrical engineering. Uh, what would you say to those people who are actually interested in civil engineering careers, uh, construction? Uh, how would you encourage them to actually look at that major and take it into consideration? And That's then we'll start taking other questions. Yep, very, very, very good point to Sham because matter of fact, we have a huge shortage in the construction field and, and civil engineering overall right now. And, uh, you know, we work, um, you don't have to even, so there's two things you can do with uh, in, in construction in general. You could be uh, a guy, you know, like me who went to school and be the engineer side, or you could even be on the, on the field and being a laborer and then, you know, laborers start as a laborer and then they become superintendent, uh, which is like a foreman or the guy managing the, 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 the logistics and everything and, and all the work in the field. And we have the uh, tremendous uh, need and demand for, for those craftsmen. And, and the people with experience, they have like 30 years experience and, and 40 years, all these people right now are retiring. And the new folks, like you said, Hisham, they're more interested in like tech and they're more interested in, in, in computer science and stuff. Those are great fields. But if you ever had the interest to join construction, don't be discouraged because there's a, there's a huge demand and huge uh, um, and shortage at the same time, like I said, and, and it's not going anywhere. This is the good thing about construction. It's not going anywhere. I mean, we can have ro robots running our lives in the future. We can have like, uh, you know, uh, atomic cars driving us without a driver, but uh, we're not gonna have uh, machines just uh, constructing buildings or hospitals. 
So construction is always in demand. There's always a need for construction. It will never go anywhere. You need to be in the field looking and supervising and inspecting every thing that every bolt, every screw, everything that goes into that building. And that is not going to be a machine doing it. It's always going to be a, a person looking at it and, and making sure that that matches the specs, that matches the drawings and stuff like that. So I, I highly, I highly encourage people to always uh, uh, think of civil engineering that it, it, it is the biggest um, umbrella out there for, um, you know, the engineering fields. Obviously, we're talking just engineering here, not comparing it to medical or law or whatever, just engineering. Civil engineering has just a vast majority of, of like so many different types of uh, careers that you can uh, follow and, and, and goals that you can achieve and you can become a CEO of the next biggest company you work for. Uh, you can, uh, like I said, even without a degree, you can be working in construction and become a superintendent, a general superintendent. And these guys, and if we want to start talking money, you know, they make a lot of money by the end, like by, by 40s or 50s or making over 200,000 or more than that. Uh, and that's just even without a degree just moving up the ladder until you, you know, you become a superintendent or something. And even with a degree, you know, you become a project manager, you become a director, you become a, a vice president, you become a, a CFO, CEO, a COO, all these, all these titles out there. You can achieve a lot with construction and, and civil engineering uh, nowadays. And there's a huge okay. demand. I stress that point. There's a huge demand. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Munder. Uh, I think we have, uh, I think, uh, Walid has a comment maybe or a question and Walid yeah. is actually in the same field uh, and it's a great honor for him to join us on yes. the Zoom room here. Yes. So Walid, do you want to say a few words? I know maybe I'm putting you on the spot, <laughs> but if you want to say any comments or if you have any questions, you want to put Munder to the Sweet. test, go for no, it. No, actually, I, uh, mashallah, he covered the whole thing. What I, just to add to whatever Munder just said, for anybody that's interested in any field in general, not just civil engineering, not not uh, just a sub um, major of civil engineering, they should actually go and try to get an intern in that uh, field. That's, I think, the best way to put it to rest. When I started school, um, I, I, we were talking about this, I think, a couple of days ago, uh, me and Hisham, uh, when I met him last week. I had no idea what civil engineering was. I had no interest in civil engineering. All I wanted to do was to have a yellow hard hat. What is that? What do they do? I have no idea. I was a seven-year-old kid. Nothing. Um, so that hat translated into architecture. So I thought anybody, any architect, you know, anybody that has a hard hat, they're an architect. So that's it. I, I didn't spend the time. Back in the days, you know, we didn't spent time doing research and all of that. So I was like, all right, architecture, that's what I'm going to do. So I get into school. I started taking classes. I'm not the best. Draw I can't draw for nothing. You know, I talked to a couple of people. They say, you know what? You're okay with math. You know, you're doing okay in math. You should consider something called civil engineering. So I was like, well, you know, okay, let me, let me look into it. So I looked into it. I liked the idea. So I started looking for jobs so I can see what civil engineers do. So I see, is that something I want to do? Because, see, we, we tend to um, get caught up in the moment. Oh, the next three years, the next four years in school, what I'm going to be doing. This is just a very, very small um, segment of your life. You're going to spend 30 to 40 years after that working in that field. So I would say invest some time in looking into an intern um, position, whether it's you know, with regards to civil engineering, you can look, work maybe for Caltrans, the California Department of Transportation, which I'm working for right now. And one of the, one that did some uh, internship with them a while back. Um, and then within that department, they do, like Monda was saying, they have transportation. So you can be working on flat construction, which is roadways and, and so on. They have structures which when they worked on uh, which bridges they deal with bridges they deal with retaining walls uh, mechanically stabilized earth um, pump houses uh, even the highway patrol uh, buildings that you see on the side of the freeways they, they constructed by caltrans um, you can actually do environmental with the uh, within caltrans you can uh, be involved in the environmental process the environmental clearance and, and the whole entire thing you can uh, do water hydraulics 
so you get the point. You can you can do construction, and, and that's what I did. I did I did a little bit of everything. I did design, I did construction, I did structures. So if you can get yourself early enough into one of these organizations, uh, and Monday, please don't hate on me. I know you like the private sector more, <laughs> but if you can if you can <laughs> if you can get yourself into an organization like that and test it, spend a year, spend six months, see if this is something for you. If not, okay, move on. That don't waste your time. Don't you know? Don't jump back and forth just find something that you because this is how you're gonna excel you have to love what you do and uh but one that covered uh and plus so <laughs> okay great uh wonder you have any 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 comments about that? well well what Walid said is actually uh, a great segue this is like working for the public versus the private sector uh this is by itself like a great topic to cover um, you know, there's benefits to both sides, but uh, obviously there's no harm on trying both. I was on the on the public side, and then I went to, back to the private side, and and then I couldn't tell you that uh, you know one of them was uh, worse or, or or something like that. Both have their benefits, and if you find yourself uh, having the opportunity uh, the opportunity to work for a private uh, company, do that. Try it. Do an internship, and then the internship is is. Uh, the end result is the same, if you guys can yeah. tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the end result, you lose your hair. That's right. <laughs> yeah. No, they're both great, but the, the key point here is try both. The try. So that is the internship. That, that's where the internship comes into play. You can't really decide until you work in a place if you really like it or you don't like it. You can't say, I don't like working for, you know, uh, the Caltrans or working for a big uh, GC, private GC, um, you, you're not going to be able to tell and, until you go and work with them hand to hand or have an internship or, or you know, you could be an on the on the other side of the coin and, and be an architect, but you deal with the GC on a daily, uh, daily basis. So just to do an internship. This is something that we I highly encourage, and obviously we lead brought that up. He, we, we highly encourage that. I did not have the opportunity to do that in my undergrad. I pretty much did it when I was doing my graduate school and I worked with Caltrans uh, as an, it's a student assistant, which is almost like an intern type of deal, but I didn't get to do that until I got to my master's degree. And, and then I realized like, you know, I like the more interactive aspect of the business and management. And that's why I decided to do uh, construction uh, management and, and working with a GC. Uh, if I wanted to do a calculations and just behind a computer and it depends on the personality and when, what do you really like? And I, like I said, you're not going to know that until you are on that seat and, and experiencing that over uh, a period of time. That's just my follow up on Walid's comments. Okay, great. If we talk a little bit of Arabic, we talk a little bit of Arabic so that we can get some of the people in the future, inshallah. اليوم صحيح. تكلمنا بشكل عام يعني ملخص بشكل عام عن الهندسه المعماريه الهندسه المدنيه وفي معنا اليوم الاخ البشمهندس مندر جابر وكذلك العديد من الضيوف معنا في في غرفه الزوم او عبر الفيسبوك معنا كذلك البشمهندس وليد السعدي من كريزنو ايضا في نفس المجال نفتح الباب للاسئله اذا عندكم اي اسئله عن طريق ال ممكن حابين تتكلموا في في غرفة الزوم أو عن طريق الفيسبوك مستعدين لاستقبال أسئلتكم أو أي تعليقات معينة طبعا أنا أنا درست هندسة كيمياء ولكن الهندسة المعمارية كأطفال أو كناس كثير في الجالية اليمنية أو أو العربية بشكل عام نحب البناء نحب البناء المعماري بشكل عام نهتم في الجسور المناظر الجميلة من الجسور والفن المعماري فكانت كنت دائما اتمنى اني ادرس هندسه هندسه مدنيه بس للاسف غيرنا بالفتره الاخيره. فيعني مجال يعني رائع ومتنوع في كل المجالات كما شرح الاخوه ونتمنى ان يكون هناك ابناء كثير من الجاليه مهتمين في هذا المجال. معنا الاخ محمد البشاري اعتقد عندك سؤال تفضل يا محمد اذا عندك سؤال ممكن تعمل ان ميوت وتفتح الكاميرا اذا تحب. يا هلا يا هلا يا شيخ انا والله مستمتع بالحديث ما بش عندي خلفية عن الهندسة شوية لكن المزاملة مع منذر والرومايت حقه من 2009 معنا ذكريات لا يوجد ذكريات بس للأمانة النقاش كان جميل جدا والشرح حق منذر من 
عفوا الشرح منظر ممتاز جدا للهندسه بس اتمنى لو يدي لنا نبدا على الموضوع طالما انتم حتى حيحفظ الفيديو نبدا على الموضوع بالعربي ما هي الحاجات الذي يتطلبها الشاب او الشابه اذا احنا نتكلم 17 18 سنه عشان يدخل المجال هذا ما هي النقاط القوه اللي لازم تكون عنده وما هي التخوفات اللي هو بيشوفها عند شباب الثانويه اللي بيقول لك ما اقدرش اكون مهندس عشان كذا كذا كذا، انا سمعت هذا بالانجليزي بس اتمنى لو نلخصها بشكل سريع بالعربي ايضا، وشكرا يا شباب، شكرا لك يا مهندس. جميل 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 جدا، انا بتكلم وكمان احب المهندس وليد كمان يعقب بعد كلامي لانه موجود اليوم شرفنا بحضوره. طبعا بالعربي بنتكلم هذا شوف هو الهندسه كمجال عام انه ضروري يكون عندك شويه حب للرياضيات وللمواد العلميه. انا مثلا كنت مجال علمي طبعا في الثانويه باليمن عندك تختار انك من ثاني ثانوي الى ثالث ثانوي تختار انك تكون علمي او ادبي. انا كنت علمي آه بس آه بدي لكم يعني شاكر هاي هذا <تصفيق> اخلي الجميع يعني جميع اصحابي وكذا ما كانوا يتوقعون اننا اتخرج هندسه بالخالص فهذا تشجيع للطلاب وهي كانت حتى في حق السلايد انه جورج بوش فور اكزامبل هو كان خريج سي ستودنت وذكر انه يعني يو نو يو سي ستودنتس كان بيكم ا بريزيدنت وانا اي uh, جات 50 50 اوت اوف 100 بالرياضيات في ثالث ثانوي So, اللي يجيبوا 50 ومطلع يو تو كان بي انجينيرز ما شاء الله ما شاء الله <تصفيق> يعني الثانويه كانت مختلفه تماما عن الجامعه فما يعني لا دونت جيت ديسكورج ولا عمرك يعني تفكر انك ما تقدر اتشيف اني ثينج ما عليك من الكلام هذا سواء كنت في الثانويه او لا انما هي قضيه الشغف مش الدرجات قضيه الشغف والحب للمجال اللي انت فيه إذا كان لك شغف في المواد العلمية وشغف في الرياضيات زي ما قال وليد يعني شاف الناس جو كلموا قالوا أنت يعني كويس في الرياضيات ومش عارف إيش ليش ما تختار الهندسة المدنية كمجال؟ أنا نفس الشيء وعلى طاري الأركتكتشر وكذا أول ما دخلت أمريكا ما كنت حتى الإنجليزي كان عندي ضعيف جدا فلما رحت لعند الكونسلر في البداية في سيري كولج في سان فرانسيسكو ما عرفت إيش السيفل إنجينيرنج كلمة السيفل إنجينيرنج إيش تقول لل للكونسلر أقول لها أنا إيش تخصص في السيفل إنجينيرنج قلت لها يعني اشتي اصلح I want to do buildings قالت لي اها اذا architecture واخذت اول architecture class وحصلت فيه سي يعني على الجبهة لانه كان كله رسومات وكذا وهذا مش طبعا وضح ممكن توضح ايش الاركتكشر يا منذر يعني اكيد في الهندسة المعمارية هي هم هذا اللي يعملوا الرسمات اللي هي الرسمات العامة هذه مثلا العمارة اربعة خمسة ادوار وكذا ويعملوا الرسمة كاملة ويعملوا رسمة تخطيط الغرف ويعملوا رسمة يعني يعني مصمم مصمم لل تصاميم فقط عليك نور تصاميم بالشبابيك بالابواب الحلوه بالمش عارف ايش بس في الاخير بيجوا مهندسين ثانيين اللي بيعملوا الحسبه هذه اللي هي حق اوكي انت تشتي تعمل العماره هذه الحلوه اللي مايله هكذا ومش عارف ايش نشتري لنا الاعمده هذه من اللي بيعمل الحسابات حق الاعمده هذه بتكون هي اللي شغالين في الهندسه تحت الهندسه المدنيه كما ذكرت وهي مثلا الستركتشر انجينير اللي بيجي يعمل الحسبه حق الاعمده بيجي الجيو تك اللي بيعمل الحسبه حق التربه وايش التربه هذه ممكن تتحمل وايش ممكن ما تتحملش وبيجي الانفايرمنتال انجينير كما ذكرت بيدرس يقول انت تشي تبني هنا هاي رايز 100 دور بس عندك جنبك بارك وحيوانات ولا مش عارف ايش وبتلوث الطبيعه بيجي يعمل لك الحسبه هذه ويعني في كلهم بيلمسوا المشروع هذا بس المهندس المعماري هو تقريبا مجال مختلف تماما عن السيفل انجينيرنج لانهم هم مور يعني هم مور بالرسومات بالتصاميم بياخذوا يعني حاجات سوفت ويرز مختلفه عن السوفت وير اللي احنا بنستخدمها فاذا كنت تحب الرسومات والتصاميم هذه فمجالك بيكون في الهندسه المعماريه اقوى وافضل وإذا كنت تحب الرياضيات والعلوم فزي ما قلت لك الدرجات ليست المعيار إنما هو الشغف والحب للمادة والمجال اللي أنت تشتي يعني تكون نفسك فيه وتبني فيه مستقبل هو الشغف والطموح ليست الدرجات وخلي وليد يعني يكلمنا كلمة إذا عنده آه سبحان الله يا أخي بعض مواقف تعمل معك فارق يعني مش طبيعي يعني تستيك with you ف... كنت مره في بالهاي سكول في الثانويه مخلص يعني في 
فكان عندي خوف من مساله الجامعه هذا مساله الكالج ومساله هذا لانه انا اول واحد تقريبا في الاسره تبعنا اللي خلص الثانويه مش الا دخل الجامعه فكان عندي هذا موضوع الجامعه حاجه يعني ما كانش يعني دماغي الصغير هذا ما كانش يصير يستوعب الموضوع هذا كله ان انا اسير مكان و ومش عارف ايش هذا فكان معي واحد من الاساتذه تبعي الانجليش ميجر فبين اتكلم معاه اي تولد I don't know if I'm ready for the whole experience, for the concept of يعني, going out. He said one thing. He said, look, college wasn't made for geniuses. That's it. College wasn't made for geniuses. يعني, you don't have to be Einstein. You don't have to be... يعني, ما, مش ضروري انك تكون يعني, بهذيك ال... يعني ضروري يكون عندك في جهد. يعني وحب لل... للموضوع زي ما قال المنبر. بس لما كلمني هكذا, I, I realized, you know what, okay. All right, I'm gonna give it a shot. وصراحة I went حتى الرياضيات يا أخي سبحان الله ما بش داعي مش ضروري إنك تكون ال top يعني بالأخير إحنا اللي بنشتغل الآن مثلاً اشتغلت أنا فترة في الجسور و و design واشتغلت في construction واشتغلت في الجيوتك واشتغلت يعني مثلاً ال ال الجسور من أكثر الأشياء اللي تعمل فيها حسابات زي ما قال المنبر بس بالأخير معك calculator يعني ما اشتري وانا كاكلير تبعي هنا يمكن في المكتب ولا هذا. يو هاف يور ايفون. يعني الموضوع مش هذا معك سوفت ويرز ذي دو ذي دو ذا كاكليشنز فور يو. يو هاف تو هاف ذا باك جراوند يو هاف تو نو اتس نوت جست احنا وي ساي اتس نوت تراش ان تراش اوت. يو هاف تو نو وات يو وات يو لوكين انتو. بس ما بش مش بالضروره انك هذا فاكثر الاشياء اللي كنت انا متخوف منها مثلا انه اي دون يعني اي دون نو وات تو اكسبكت. فزي ما قلت لك يعني الموضوع ما يحتاج هذا جست A little bit of uh, effort on your behalf. Uh, what, what to, uh, you're, you're set for the rest of your life. يعني, I know when they're be telling no, uh, يعني, they don't make money. يعني, we, don't, we, we don't become rich. We make very decent living. يعني, ف, لما الطالب, يعرف انه اوكي لما يتخرج مثلا حيعمل 100000 في ش... في السنه حيعمل 120 حيعمل 150 حيعمل 180 حيعمل 200000 ف this is it shouldn't be a source of هذا بس should... يعني this is one of the points taken into account تعب السنتين ف وعرف انه ما بش حاجه مستحيله لانه اللي قبلك يعني ما كانوا ش... يقول لك يعني سبحان الله 95% of us we have the same capacity brain wise معك ال 2.5% اللي top ومعك 2.5% below that بس overall it's very doable اشتي عقب بس حاجة لأنه أنا داري محمد البشاري هو كان احنا بتتكلم ذا الحين بس من ناحية التحفيز ولا كذا كذا بس أنا داري هو بيسأل تقريبا المتطلبات بالضبط المتطلبات ما هي شيء المتطلبات بس زي ما قلت لك انما يكون عندك الطموح وال والطموح وطبعا الشغف للماده بس في نفس الوقت يعني لما تروح سيتي كالج بعد تختبر انجليزي ورياضيات مثلا او بتروح حتى اس ستيت اذا عندك البيسك حق الرياضيات والانجليزي الرياضيات يعني قاعد بي ان كالكولس بيسكلي كالكولس وما فوق هذا للطلاب يعني احنا الكلام اللي قلته انا وليد الحين هذا تحفيز وتشجيع للطلاب وللاباء وكذا بشكل عام بس اذا دخلنا للتكنيكاليتي يعني اوف ذا اوف ذا سبجكت آه فضروري يكون عندك كالكولس آه يعني ما هذا بتكون البدايه حقك هي من الكالكولس ومطلع بالنسبه للهندسه تمام طبعا في تخصصات ثانيه يعني يلا اجيب لك ارثماتكس ولا مش عارف ايش والله افتح عليك مع السلامه بس كهندسه المتطلبات الرياضيات تبدا من الكالكولس ومطلع فاذا عندك يعني انا اخذت بري ريكويزيتس لما وصلت للكالكولس يمكن ثلاثه او اربعه بس اذا انت قدك يعني مالك شيء لانه بحكم ان اللغه ولا احنا في اليمن بتكوننا خلصنا اللي هو التكامل والتفاضل هذا خلصناه في اليمن بس لما جانا هنا تعبنا مع اللغه وحطونا في البليسمنتس يعني بليسمنت تحت بس اذا عندك الكالكولس وال والانجلش 1 اي والهذا له هنا الفاونديشن الاساسيات ومن من بعدها بعد انت تاخذ كالكولس 1 2 3 4 بلا 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 توصل لها لينير الجبرا وما الى ذلك والفيزكس كمان فيزكس 1 2 3 تخلص الفيزكس كلهن والكيمياء يعني ما احنا احنا كيمياء هذا مجال هشام هشام زي يمكن خلص الكيمياء من وإلا بس احنا يمكن اخذنا ماده او مادتين كيمياء ومن ثم هذه تقريبا اول سنتين في المجال والسنتين الاخيرات اللي هي بقى تبدا تدخل في في مواد الهندسه نفسها الهندسه المدنيه وتبدا تاخذ العام الهندسه المدنيه العام وزي ما ذكرت انه في الكتيفز اللي هي بتخليك تتخصص في ايذر يا ترانسبورتيشن المواصلات او بتخليك تتخصص في الـ في الكونستراكشن في المشاريع 
او بتخليك تتخصص في الواتر ريسورسز انجينيرنج او الانفايرمنتال او الجيوتك طبعا في مجال ثاني انا ضروري الوح للموضوع هذا في مجال لحاله زي ما قلت في تشيكو ستيت هذا في عندهم كونستراكشن مانجمنت من البدايه من البدايه كونستراكشن مانجمنت ما ما, ما تعملش انجينيرنج الكونستراكشن مانجمنت لس مره لس ماث ومواد علميه ياخذوا بس مش زينا احنا والفاني فاكت او ذا ايرني هنا انا اخذت خلصت يعني ماجستير في الهندسه المدنيه لكن بالاخير رحت اشتغل مع جنرال كونتراكتور اللي هو كونستراكشن قلبا وقالبا واحنا في قلب الحدث يوميا ومع الكذا فاغلب الخريجين اللي معي اغلبهم كونستراكشن مانجمنت ما اضطروش انهم يصلعوا زي انا وليد <تصفيق> يعني الدنيا عندهم كانت عوافي اكثر بس يعني زي ما قلت هم كانوا بياخذوا مواد علميه اقل لكن هذه تحصلها في جوامع قليله فاحنا هنا في البيئه اريا كل اللي شغال معاهم من البيئه اريا خريجين يو سي بيركلي خريجين يو سي ديفيس خريجين كذا اغلبهم سيفل انجينيرنج لانه ما في الكونستراكشن مانجمنت هذا ما تحصلش في اغلب الجامعات لكن اذا انت حابي بس ستريت تروح لكونستراكشن خذ لك كونستراكشن مانجمنت بس اذا تخصص زي وليد ولا حاجات كذا ممكن سيفل انجينيرنج ولو قطع ولو قطع حديثك في في فريزنو بي هاف ذا سيم بروجرام طبعا كونستراكشن مانجمنت اوكي. وانا اعرف بعض الناس يعني زي ما قلت يعني يمنيين الان بداوا يركزوا في الموضوع انه يا اخي انا احب الفيلد احب اشتغل في الفيلد ان انا اجلس واحد زائد اربعه يكون سبعه ف في الموضوع واختصروها يعني فكلها زي ما قلت موضوع ايش الشيء انت تعمل. بالضبط انا لفيتها لفه طويله ورجعت اشتغلت مع الجي سي مش انه حاجه عاديه يعني عندي كثير زي ما قلت لك خريج نيو سي بيركلي وكذا سيفل انجينيرنج هندسه مدنيه يعني اتس كومن مش انها مش كومن بس اذا تشتي على طول تدخل للعمق مثلا الكونستراكشن والجي سي وكذا تقدر تصلح لك كونستراكشن مانجمنت وهي اسهل من ناحيه الرياضيات والمواد العلميه والمتطلبات وما الى ذلك اسهل بس انت انت طبعا بس عشان ما اقطعكم اسف فضل آه فضل. بس قصدي يعني في مجالات كثيره في حياة طبعا في الهندسه وغير الهندسه وفي بعض المجالات مثل ما قلت مش ضروري انك تروح الجامعه وتاخذ يعني اربع سنوات تتخرج بكالوريوس او ماجستير في عندك اشياء حرفيه ممكن تاخذها خلال يعني كورس او برنامج 6 مانث تو ايير تقدر تتخرج تشتغل في في مجال الكونستراكشن او الكتريشن ميكانيك ميكانيك ذير از اول كاينز اوف فيلدز انا اي ونت تيك ذس اوبورتونيتي جست تو سامرايز ذس ان انجلش سو ذي وير توكين اباوت ذا بري ريكويزيتس and the basic requirements for you to enter into an engineering field. Essentially, you need to do your, complete all your course requirements in high school and may, maybe community college if you have to. In math, you have to complete all your math up to calculus and beyond. You have to complete all your physics, physics one, two, three. I don't remember the exact naming of the courses, but you have to complete your physics. Right. And also, if you're going to go in chemical, uh, chemical engineering or uh, engineering in general, you might need some Uh, chemistry courses as well, uh, and basics in circuits and statics and statistics. Uh, so these are the basic foundational or fundamental courses that you have to complete starting in high school and finishing them up in the first couple of years in community college. Uh, and just to take advantage of this, uh, AYSP, we are working on a college and career program where we will organize uh, sessions like these to talk about different majors and to also how to apply for colleges, how to choose your career. Uh, we will host counselors from high schools, from community colleges. Uh, we actually just announced this, uh, this program early this, this month, and it will be led by Mohammed Al Girmi. And we have a plan for the whole school year. So I really uh, look forward to in- engaging and interacting with a lot of professionals who are with us in the room and those who will be watching the video later on uh, to be a resource for us to tap into once we cover different fields and help the students throughout their community college or even start thinking about careers while they're juniors or seniors in high school. Uh, so just to wrap up, uh, I'm looking for last minute questions if they're gonna come in from the room. Uh, otherwise, I'll have Munvir maybe give a closing remark and Walid, uh, since he's also on the field, if he wants to give a closing remark to encourage and motivate students to pursue careers and go to college. Uh, any other questions on the Zoom room? You can just unmute yourself or turn on your camera. Mohammed, Mohammed, Mulhem, you want to go ahead, Mulhem? Yeah, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thanks for doing this. It's 
been uh, very insightful. Uh, I had a question about uh, working transportation, uh, Caltrans more specifically. Uh, what's the best way to go about getting an internship to go ahead and get into the field as a as a transportation engineer working with like roadway design? That's a that's a very good question, and uh, we have you have the right guy here, Walid. He works for Caltrans. I did a little bit of an internship. I volunteered pretty much. I knew through Hisham actually met يعني, uh, one of the engineers at uh, Caltrans. Uh, and I just said, hey, I just want to volunteer for free. And, uh, and I worked as a volunteer for two months. And then uh, when I started my master's program, they switched that volunteer uh, position into an assistant, uh, student assistant uh, program. And I was making whatever, you know, minimum wage or whatever, but it, it was the experience and the internship. But I will let uh, Walid uh, speak to that because he works in Caltrans. Uh, you know. Very good. So uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get the name, Mohammed, صح? It's Mulham. Uh, Mulham. Mulham. Okay, so uh, are you ready? There's a website. It's called calcareers.ca.gov. That's C A L, Cal Careers, C A R E E R S dot C A dot G O V. So when you go there, basically, you just you'll, you'll go to that website and then look for advanced job research and uh, search search and then you, you just basically put in the whatever you're looking for and you'll find out the openings within the department of transportation um another thing i can share with you my phone number if you have uh, specific questions on how to because it can the the process of applying it can be very very hard uh, not hard it's just time consuming and I've seen time and time again where people actually just give up halfway through. They just don't want to go through the process, the paperwork, the, uh, the amount of questions. And it, it can be a little bit time consuming. It can take hours sometimes. Um, and I have no problem sit down, sitting down with you and going through the process line by line. Um, I can share um, my phone number if you want it. If you want to take it down right now or I can, Hisham has it, he can give yeah. it to you. But yeah, the best way is to go to that website look for the job that you're looking for and they always have i, I don't know what what area are you in uh transportation engineering i kind of want to work with uh, along the lines of roadway design roadway design i'm at, I'm, at, I'm sorry uh basically where you located in what area oh, in california uh elk grove california sacramento okay perfect so so the the department of transportation basically is divided into um, um nine different regions your region is called District three or region three. It's basically the headquarters. This is where basically the, a lot of the positions are located in Sacramento. Um, uh, there's a town just a little bit north of you, but anywhere between Stockton and, 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 and Chico, there's a lot of positions. There's actually openings right now for a student assistant in Sacramento. Uh, this so is great. This is awesome. Exactly. This is exactly what Wally, this is exactly what we talked about the other day uh, yeah. about, you know, providing that mentorship and guidance to our students and, and to whether they're in college or even in high school. I just texted uh, Mulham your phone number privately okay. to his to his own uh, chat so he can see that number. And Mulham, so one of the first things that you need to do, you know, as you're looking for internships is the, the network. Essentially, you coming here today is a perfect demonstration of that. Uh, I wish a lot of a lot of students take choose to, to join these uh, platforms and, and and discussions so they can network with professionals. Uh, so I gave you his number. You can connect with him, uh, and then maybe you can find him on LinkedIn as well. Uh, but AYSP, I'm taking a, a chance to promote what we're doing or to actually. Uh, of course, know, no, that's the community. Yeah. We will be launching a mentorship website in the coming weeks. A mentorship website where we will have. Yemeni professionals across the U.S. from all fields, engineering, science, uh, uh, law, e economics, e any field that you can think of, they will be signed up as mentors. They will give their availability on the website and you as a student or as a young professional or as a community member who wants to ask about a certain career, you can go there, find the mentor that you want to speak with, go there, select the time that is appropriate for you and for the mentor and it will automatically connect you, you know, through Zoom or through a phone call. 
So this is a feature that we will be launching in the next few weeks. We are working on it. And this project is being led by Mohammed Al Mahbashi, who is also a local Bay Area professional who has been uh, a great asset for AOISB and the community as a whole. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to stay within the time frame yes. that we have assigned. Uh, if, if we don't have any further questions, I'll just uh, you know, allow a chance for Mundar to give a closing remarks and also Walid to kind of wrap us up with, with his final, final thoughts. I'll, uh, can we let Walid go first and then I'll be closing. Okay, let's, let's do it. Walid, your final thoughts and then we'll, we'll close with Mundar. Uh, networking is unbelievably, unbelievably important. So reach out, um, go to places, go to, pl find out people where they work, see if you can, sometimes you have to push yourself a little bit, especially at the very beginning. It's really hard. I, I finished uh, in 2010 and then my bachelor's, I couldn't find a job until 2013. And one of the reasons is because I was busy during my school years. I was uh, busy with life. I was married. Um, I had kids early on, so I never had uh, opportunity to actually work a real job when I'm uh, in, in my field. Uh, I did that early on, but nothing of substance. So it took me three years to find a job, a real job. So now you guys are graduating at a very uh, good time. There's a need, like Mother was saying, it's Right now, it got into a point where at Caltrans, we do something called mass hire. It got into a point where it's just, we have 80 interviews a day to get people in. Um, we had one just last week. We interviewed 87 people. We offered jobs to over 25 of those 87. Only four people accepted the positions. It's just because there's work that people are looking for, uh, for work everywhere. So you came at a perfect, right? I don't know. Uh, I don't know when well, he's no. going to go. Within, within the next, I would say, two to three years, there's always going to be something open. It's just you got you to network. You got to find the right people. You got to know the right process. Just because right now, a lot of people are retiring and uh, we can't keep up with the retirement rate. So, again, just, just know the right folks, know the right people and push yourself a little bit. It's okay. Be a little bit pushy. That's fine. Until you get yourself that position and then you'll be okay you'll help someone else and you'll feel better okay Mundar, your, your closing remarks Arab Mundar. Uh, you're on mute Okay, yeah, so I said, you know, inshallah, this is going to be a beneficial video when we share it and stuff like that. My issue been too long, it's already like an, uh, about an hour, you know, we started like 5.15, so it's about an hour now. Um, yeah, and in my closing remarks, um, first of all, I mean, we need, we need uh, more students and we need uh, more students also uh, going out there and getting jobs. And you have to be eager. Uh, my advice, I need to everyone to know you have to be eager. When, you, when you're looking for a job, the Haina Mithran Walid, Mulham as an example, Mulham, you have to... Uh, yeah, and he, uh, the, every day call Walid, text him, email him. You know, you have to be. Yeah, and he rasa adi. Hadi, this is one of the problems I dealt with. Ma al mishkla hagan al shabab al jaliyah wal wal sgar hadla. Li bi tkhrajo. Yeah, and he ma. They're not. Uh, they want to get jobs, but they're not eager enough. Unfortunately, yeah, and he some obviously not everyone. And I want to throw that example. Yeah, and he na laman bakhat. Shtagalt volunteer for free. Part-time job more than what I was. Uh, obviously, I was free or working for free. I left that job and I can be fairly flush. I worked for a couple of months with the California Department of Transportation. Then I spent 15 dollars per hour and it was not much less than the work that I was working as a part-time job. Uh, so the end is you have to be eager. When a person gives you a professional, he gives you the field and the opportunity, like Sham Hussain, like Walid. مثلي أي واحد يعني في البروفيشنال فيد أعطوك المجال والمساحة إنك تتواصل معهم وقالوا لك إحنا بنساعدك وبنسوي يعني call them uh, every day till you get what you want don't uh, just call one time ولا text one time ويجلس أسبوع أسبوعين 
حتى تنتظر انهم يتواصلوا معاك لانه احنا كيمنيين اول حاجه محتاجين ان احنا نكبر السيركل هذه تمام وبعدين لما تشتغل مع الوايت ولا كذا اذا ما تتابع شوف في روم فالو اب اذا يجينا سي يو نات سيريس عارف كيف اذا بعد ترجع بعد اسبوعين او ثلاثه اسابيع تتواصل معاهم وكذا وقد لك مطنش يعني الفتره هذه كلها ذير نات جونا تيك يو سيريسلي تمام فاحنا ممكن احنا اليمنيين البروفيشنالز زي زي هشام كذا وي تيك ات ليل بيت ستريكت وذ يو جايز لانه ليش؟ لان احنا نشي ناهلكم انكم لما تشتغلوا في الوظائف هذه مع الشركات الكبيره وكذا يو هاف تو بي يعني بيرسستنت افري داي اسكن فور ذا جاب بي ايجر اند اول ذات ستف الخلاصه كمان للاباء وللهذا الهندسه طبعا شيء احنا نحتاجه بشكل كبير ذا الحين المجال الهندسي اليمن يعني قديم مكسره وخربانه يعني ميبي ان ذا فيوتشر اف وي ايفر جونا جو باك يعني تشي تبني ولا حاجه بدل ما تروح توظف لك ناس من خارج البلاد نشتي ناس مؤهلين هنا في امريكا و... 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 وحصولك على الخبره حق امريكا هذه لا تعوض فانت هنا في بلاد اول حاجه عندهم الستاندردز فيري هاي لما تجي تبني حقهم الستاندرد اعظم من اي بلاد في العالم اعظم من دبي اعظم من من يو نو دبي بنوا اكبر عماره اطول عماره مش عارف ايش الحاجات هذه الخياليه بس ستيل لما تشتغل هنا في امريكا انت بتتعلم ذا بيست ستاندردز اوف ذا اندستري ان اني وير ان ذا وورلد سواء كان مجالك هندسه مدنيه، هندسه معماريه، هندسه كهربائيه، هندسه كيميائيه، اي مجال انت بتتعلم هنا في امريكا اعلى وافضل الستاندردز. فخذ الفرصه هذه وانت هنا، والدراسه هي مش صعبه زي ما قال وليد يعني معك اربع سنين خمس سنين جست شو اب، اي اولويز سي ذيس وورد، وهذه كانت حتى في الكرت حقي ماي فيرست ادفايس تو ايفري وان شو اب. وايش المعنى حق شو اب؟ انك جست جو تو كلاس. هنا عادي مش ضروري تجيب الجريدز الاي والبي وتجيب الدرجات الضخمه بس اذا ما بتروحش الكلاس يور نوت جيفن ايفن ذا بروفيسور ا تشانس تو باس يو سو يعني انت لما تروح يمكن بحضورك الاستاذ ينجحك بس اذا ما رحت وما حضرت يور نوت ايفن جيفن هيم ا ريزن تو 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 باس يو سو ذاتس وين وين اي سي جست شو اب ذاتس يعني انا هذه ماي بيست ادفايس تو جيف تو اني ون الحضور 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 احضر وروح المدرسه وواصل كلاساتك كل يوم و... وسواء يعني مثلا رسب في الاختبار هذا او نجحت في الاختبار هذا او جبت درجات عاليه او انت من الاي ستودنت ولا السي ستودنت في الاخير بتتخرج وبتحصل وظيفه نو ماتر وات خصوصا في الهندسه. الهندسه دائما في لها ديماند وفي لها يعني طلب مهول في كل الدول يعني مش حتى هنا في امريكا. دائما لها طلب مهما حصل الاقتصاد نزل الاقتصاد طلع دائما في بناء ودائما يعني الدنيا هذه ما بتتوقفش بالبناء. فواصل انت مشوارك الدراسي وبتحصل وظيفه نو مار وات يمكن تتعب يعني فتره كذا تحب تدوري وكذا انا تعبت يعني شليت شغل ببلاش شهرين وبعدين عندك المدارس انها تساعدك بالفاينانشال ايد تساعدك بال يعني ورست كيس سيناريو تبدين ذي هاف لونز اي توك لونز اي توك لونز يعني لما انا اشتغلت ببلاش في كال ترانس يعني احنا ناس اندبندنت وكلنا بنجي مغتربين احنا اليمنيين بشكل عام وكذا Some of us يعني عندهم الفاميلي سبورت، some of them they don't. بس المدرسة هنا they make it so easy for you. They give you financial aid, they give you scholarships. Then you're يعني smart enough to get scholarships. They give you a full ride, some of them, if you're even smarter. And worst case scenario, if حصلت نفسك في يوم من الأيام هكذا في position where I was, يعني إنك you have to take a volunteer position and you still have to survive and pay for school and pay for rent and all that stuff. They always have loans. Not that I encourage it, but you know there is always a way. And like they said, if there is a will, there is a way. المهم هذا هنا صيحتي وخصوصا الآباء دائما شجعوا أطفالكم على التعليم وال وال والدراسة هذا this is what we need. إحنا اليمنيين بشكل عام تقريبا يعني to be frank أو نكون صريحين في الموضوع تقريبا اليمن هي للأسف من الدول المتأخرة كثير حتى في الشرق الأوسط بالنسبة للتعليم. فإحنا ربنا أعطانا هنا الفرصة إن إحنا نكون في بلد زي أمريكا وكذا. اتمنى من الجميع انهم يستغلوا هذه الفرصه وياخذوا شهايدهم و they join a workforce حق امريكا ومن ثم ان شاء الله في المستقبل هذا بيثمر ثمار قويه جدا ان احنا نقدر نبني بالشباب هذا حتى باك هوم شيء يصلح لليمن على العموم هذه 620 right now وهذه ماي فاينل وورد وارجع المايك ل All right thank you thank you very much Munzer I really want to thank you for your time and and your effort today in putting this uh, this together and, and and your availability i want to thank warid for for joining us uh, and you know giving us his valuable feedback i want to thank all the guests on the zoom uh, students professionals community members for joining us i want to thank all of those who watch us on facebook or share the stream again the stream will be on facebook forever you can share it uh, and get uh, you know uh, 
the benefit out to as many people as, as you can. Uh, AOISD will continue to host these sessions. You can go back to our story on Facebook or to the news feed, and you will see a number of webinars that we have produced over the past few months and uh, some highlights of, of, of Yemeni successful stories in our Yemeni Professional of the Month series. In the coming weeks, we will launch a new program, mentorship program, as I mentioned. We will also launch a career and college program as well. Uh, and also just today we announced uh, a technical pro professional course, introduction to SQL. If you wanna become a, a data analyst or start looking into that field, we have, we have a course being offered uh, by a mentor who will be with you almost 16 hours over the course of a month. Uh, so please take advantage of these opportunities and, uh, and uh, give us the feedback, give us the support as much as you can. Uh, in the end, I want to say thank you to everyone and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, thank you. Have a blessed day. See ya. Thank you.